Howdy folks, it's Alice here, and welcome back to Vampire. Once we left off, we were going to find Darius Petrescu. Let's have a look here. Hello, young man. I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me then? Okay then. Come on in. I'm Harry, by the way. All right, Harry. Even my dreams are soaked with gloom. Oh gosh. Oh, we got some uh, things. I guess we got to talk to you. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? All right, so we got Harry Peterson. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. All right, so he has, does have fatigue. All right. I will see. All right, so we don't need anything like that. Another one, white chill. How do you feel? All those require hints that we don't have. We only have. Don't have any. Peterson, okay, so this is Colossus Joe's kid. How do you feel? How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Oh, well, do you, do you say that to him? Because I'm sure he'd, uh... Forgive my bluntness, young man, but you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? Mm-hmm. You have a place to call home, your situation can only improve, your father did his best. Um. <laughs> um. Definitely, I think <laughs> it only goes up from here, kid. I don't know. This place is awful. I agree. But does that not mean your situation can only improve? That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. I wasn't even consulted when we moved. It's not exact. I didn't say the exact same thing. Oh, uh, why not just leave? All right, we need like all the hits to do that. Why not just leave? If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I, I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing, and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Oh boy. Alright, well, we can't talk to you about anything else. We're going to ask you about Crane. Sure. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. All right, well. Even um, my dreams are soaked with gloom. All right, you keep telling yourself that. And uh, you'll just uh, loot all of your dad's things. He's kind of a jerk. Really be very happy about. It's locked, all right. Locked. Hmm. I like that. I like you being able to see outside. Job refusal letter. Hmm. All right, we had a lot of stuff. Yeah, we'll get. We'll read through that stuff here in a second. I want to look at job refusal letter. 
Mr. Peterson. You refuse to accept your application to a dockyard position. Your ill boy and loss of life, or loss of wife. Policy which reproves the employment of former criminals or convicts. All right, so he wants to get out, but his reputation making it hard for him to get out. So that's something. I like that. That gives some dimension to our Mr. Peterson. All right, there's a, like a chaplain up here. Oh, he's one of the crazy ones. Okay. The wars of men should not be your main concern. The disease upon us is not an accident of nature, but the punishment of a divine will. Mm -hmm. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. Mm -hmm. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. Oh, okay. Don't you fear getting sick yourself? I've been touched by God's grace. I am perfectly healthy. Maybe physically. I don't know much about the in the uh, mental health department, but um, pretty sure I've seen you at like a CVS pharmacy or something. But whatever. Anywho. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. Well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden... About to? Have you looked around? Uh, we can say we're listening, or I only believe in facts. Um, he seems pretty dead set on science. So... I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. Alright. Maybe we'll have time to talk about... Alright, have you any family left? That's a weird left turn, but sure. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Uh, where'd you send him? Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery. Whoa. Where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. Dude, that was a bad idea. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. We get, like, no hints from this guy. All right. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Uh, you don't like nurses. So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. Oh, okay. That's, that's an interesting thing that, that's being brought up here that you don't think about anymore, but it's something that would have been a thing back in the day. It's like, oh. <laughs> Think of it, taking away nurses, uh, take, not take away, taking away nuns' jobs, and uh, on the basis of nuns are celibate, so they won't be tempted to sleep with men. <laughs> oh boy. Good lord. They've come so far, they have so much longer to go, as human beings do. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, 
She was a member of the communist resistance in her country. Oh, first mention of communism. That's huh? what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. Oh, so now we know more details about Dorothy Gray. We know that she's a communist. How dare she? Not really. I have had enough for tonight. Goodbye. All right. So let's find. Let's quit dallying about. We found a good chunk of the people in this area, and pretty serious health going on there. This all but one person that we have no idea where they are in the docks. So. I think it's time we find our little buddy that we we're supposed to be finding, Darius. All right, Darius. Knock, knock. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Oh. So, we know he has bronchitis. Observing what he's up to. How do we do that, I wonder? The outside? Yes, we can. Alright. F? There we go. Strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidacott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. Alright, so we got a couple of name drops. A journalist and a poet. Who's nobody's the right arm? Dorothy Crane. So we have, they also have, they're also like closely what their social circle is. If they have one, they're like close to it, close to each other. So she's close to someone. And we have Petrescu has some people he's close to. So we have to like find more people to. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. All right. Nearby the church they just mentioned. All right. So the church will get us to. The journalist. I mean, the uh. Is it journalist? Yeah, the church will get us to the journalist. While they didn't say specifically where the poet might be, just around. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Right, we've talked to you guys, not thoroughly, but we have talked to you guys. Hello. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby. There's reporter. a reporter. Sorry, okay. I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Uh, underground medical dispensary. We can just ask him some questions. Let's ask him some questions first. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. All right, he does have fatigue. I will see you later. We'll need that later. Personal questions we already looked at. There's, we need hints. 
Let's talk about. I'm not afraid of getting out at night. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? It's not a simple epidemic. There's a rational explanation. Rationalism has been recently shaking. Shaken. Um, yeah, there's... There's definitely a rational explanation for that this. science is unable to explain the facts doesn't mean there is no rational explanation. I confess, I share your point of view, Doctor. All right. Uh, so what are you doing here after sunset? What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. Is the public interested? That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, <laughs> hoping to sell some stories. Okay. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Okay. So we know a little something about them. So none of them speak about the epidemic. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish And now, the it's YouTube video has been care. super flagged. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Uh, what did you just say? You just need to script. I hate this. Um. I think, what do I think? Criminal disgrace. So I think what he just talked about was the fact that no one's covering it. And it's because they're talking about, they don't want to talk about something that is so terrible. Or that they don't have the answers for. And so, I would say it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. All right, so nothing new to talk about? No. All right, so we'll talk about... I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are wary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Nurse I know is compromised, confidential, or I care about the public health. Um, confidential is not going to help me, help me with him. Um, saying too much is not going to help me with him. Let's talk about public health. I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so nothing new here. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Alrighty. Now let's find the poet. All right, being by the church, probably gonna be some nastiness around the corner. Yep, I hear ya. Just a regular skull. Some cigarettes. Hello, buddy. How's it going? 
Oh, we got more, huh? Didn't realize. Alright, just two, though. No, there's three. What the? I knew. I was about to say. I thought I saw three, but then I only saw two, and now that I know there's three. Dagnabbit. Freaking suckers. Alright, get out of here. Throw, please. Thank you. Take him down. Dag now it. Ran out of stamina. Dag, if I'm not controlled on him, then can't use the freaking. thing that I want to use. Alright, you had nothing on you. Alright. Works for me, I guess. Alright, so behind the church. I'm not technically behind the church yet. Alright, well this poet's got some... interesting company. Just around the corner. Find Richard in the area. There's the cemetery. Alright, what is he talking about? There he is. Silent flower of white chapel. An angel made flesh, I tell you. Okay. Alright, Richard. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. Mm -hmm. Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. Oh, yes, cold. Yeah, let's give him a cold. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. Uh-huh. Alright, well, let's talk about... What are you doing here at night? May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. Not afraid of the epidemic? But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. Interesting. Do you need medical attention? Thank you, I didn't want to press that. Do you have a pill for inspiration? I didn't want to press that. All right. May I? Not a all right. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, doctor, and my family despises me. No hints at all. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy but the scourge has not been all bad for the city oh no sir what are you talking about do you remember london before the flu noisy cacophonic quiet nowhere to be found and now listen to this oddly peaceful silence uh wow peaceful silence really 
Um, you know, it's a disease, quite a unique point of view. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna say peaceful silence. Peaceful? That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Right. You seek inspiration in Whitechapel. Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. You have examples? In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles and the arid hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me oh, about Camellia? Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Oh, she probably hates you. <laughs> uh, so you don't know her? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? So you... Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? Okay. Give us any Tell me, Mr. The place. Nope. Head back. All right. No hints for there. Nothing there. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious, but sorry, no, never heard of her. <laughs> what can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Okay. All right, so nothing else? I'll leave you alone, sir. All right, so just got to go back and talk to him now. Nothing else in this area? Seems like we covered everything for the most part. Oh. That's a flower. Can I grab it? Small flower bouquet with a voucher for a free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. Oh, so we have like two of those now. So she's part of it too. She gives people flowers and those flowers is... Stuff. Oh, yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Alright, definitely not. Let's see if we can talk to this guy. Now. Have we talked to you before? Who are you? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm. Uh, I know you understand me. Tell me about Richard Nethercott. 
You don't seem to need my medical attention for now. Okay. All right, so we know everything there is to know. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Hmm. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. <laughs> Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Okay. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Okay. Well, see ya. Very well. Goodbye then. That puts us. We can find the mailbox. Is that what that said? Find the mailbox in the letter. Our next thing. There yeah, we have Richard. Darius, Camellia, Dorothy, Darby, he's close with someone. We have Loretta, who's close with someone, and we have one more person. So three more people we need to look for. Find the mailbox. Interesting. Where? Where? The mailbox B, I wonder. I cannot enter. Anyone saw that? Can't do anything up here. So pointless. Okay. Maybe it was a a place to look around. All right, we're gonna see if we can find this stinking mailbox. Supposedly, further that way, forty-three yards. Like right on it. Probably further this way. All right, we know about that. Am I gonna? Am I gonna? Have mailboxes changed their look <laughs> in the uh, last hundred years? Do I know a mailbox when I see one? Huh. That certainly is interesting. Oh boy. Up here maybe? Or to keep out of this area by order of the Board of Health. Yeah. Like a fire hydrant. There we go. My dearest, most beloved children. Hear from me in a few months. These are just been difficult. They sound selfish, silly. Still living in a country that's by war. There's war going on in England. It's poverty, it's injustice, war. If I intend to fight despite his years. So he's not going back to Romania. It probably means that he won't see them again before he's dead. Don't be sad. You're grown up now. You have children of your own. We know the sacrifice we ex must accept to make the world a better place. This one I must make now and feel useful one more time. Wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Oh, man. That sucks. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Okay. Alright, so we'll have to do that next time. So, till next time, this has been Zathaios, signing out for now. Bye, folks.